Hi everybody, my name is Jenna and I'm an Academic Success Ambassador with the Academic Success Center. Today I'm going to be going over the study cycle with you all. Before I get on with talking about the study cycle, I want to give you a little more information about the Academic Success Center. So we are located in 1060 Hickson Lead, which is right across from Maple Willow Larch and right off the Orange 23 bus route. You can also contact us by emailing the email on the screen, visiting our website, or calling the phone number listed. I also want to briefly touch on an overview of our services. We offer academic coaching, Psych 131, which is an academic skills course, presentations and workshops, tutoring services, and supplemental instruction. If you want to find more information out about any of the following services, visit our website to learn more about them. The Study Cycle Workshop is adapted from Dr. Sandra McGuire's book, Teach Students How to Learn. So before we start, I just want to give credit to her and the book listed on the left. Okay, so now we're going to get into the Study Cycle Workshop. In the next couple of slides, you're all going to be participating in a learning activity called the Vowel Activity. I'm going to explain the directions as we go. So to start on the next slide, you're going to see a list of words or phrases. I ask that you count all the vowels and I'm going to give you 45 seconds to do so. If you have a scratch piece of paper, you can go ahead and pull that out with a pencil. Or if you printed the packet off to work along with, pull that out. And it's also a good idea to have the packet pulled up somewhere to follow along with this workshop. So before I go to the next slide, make sure you have that writing utensil available, your packet, or some paper to write it down. And then I'm going to flip to the next slide, and I'm going to keep this presentation running for 45 seconds. When your time's up, I'll flip to the next slide. So your 45 seconds is going to start now. Okay, time's up. Okay, so how did that go? Did you write down how many vowels there were? Well, if you did, unfortunately, the number of vowels doesn't actually matter. Instead, I actually want you to try to recall all of the words and phrases that you just saw. So the scratch paper where you wrote down the number of vowels, or if you printed the packet off, go ahead and list out as many of the words or phrases you can in the blank section of the packet or on your scratch paper you previously used. You can go ahead and pause this video as you write down as many of the words and phrases you can remember. Okay, so now I have the original list back up on the screen. Take some time to go through, see how many phrases or words that you got correct. Count up the number of words that you remembered and then divide that number by 15 and multiply it by 100. That will give you your score as a percentage. So if you got 3 right, take 3 divided by 15 and multiply it by 100. Once again, that's going to give you a score as a percentage. So reflect, how did you do? Did you get 80% right, 60%, 40%, maybe less than 40? Okay, so now that we determined how well you did, let's look at the list, reading it from top to bottom, and see if you can figure out the underlying organizing principle. So go ahead, pause this video, and think a minute about how this list of words and phrases is organized. So now that you took a minute to look at how it's organized, you probably came to the realization that the list is organized according to number. We start with a dollar bill, one. We move to dice, which is two, 
tricycle three, four leaf clover four, and so on as the list goes. Okay, so now that you know how it's organized, we're gonna do this activity one more time. I'm gonna give you 45 more seconds where I'll keep this video running for you to study the list again, try to memorize the phrases, and then once again, when the time is up, you can pause the video and try to write down as many phrases as you remember. Okay, your time starts now. Okay, your time is up. Try to see how many phrases you can remember. Okay, so you should have paused the video and tried to see how many phrases you could remember. So once again, I have the original list up. So go back through again, count the number of items you accurately remembered in your packet. Once again, you're gonna take that number, divide it by 15 and multiply it by 100 and that will give you a percentage. So if you got eight right this time, take eight, divide it by 15, and multiply it by 100. Once again, how did you do? Did you get 100%, 90, maybe 80 this time? Calculate that and see if there was a difference between your first attempt and your second attempt. So there probably was an improvement between your first and your second attempt. What made that difference? Take a minute, pause this video, and reflect on what you think the difference was. There are two specific things that I'm looking for. So reflect and think about what two things changed. Why did you do better the second time? Okay, so now that you had a little bit of time to reflect, I'm going to go over those two things that made the difference. The first thing is that you were aware of your goal. The second time, you knew that you needed to memorize the list instead of counting the vowels. Now, being aware of our goals, it correlates to studying. If we're aware of what we're studying, we have a better chance of having a better outcome when studying that material. The second part is that there was a good system for learning the information the second time. We had a way to recognize how the information was organized, and it was a good system. We knew that it was in numerical order. We related that information to something that was familiar to us. So in this case, we were relating that list to numbers. So I intentionally misled you at the beginning and then revealed to you the true task. So ultimately, this shows that students can use metacognition, which is learning about your own learning, and I'll talk about in the next slide, to reveal to yourself the true purpose of your academic assignments and discover the learning objectives for your homework that has been designed. So in the previous slide, I mentioned that students can use metacognition, which is learning about your own learning, to reveal to yourself the true purpose. So that was the overall goal of that activity. So what metacognition is, it's the ability to think about your own thinking. So a, way, a good way to think about that is like having a big brain outside of your brain that's thinking about and observing what your brain is doing. Metacognition is being consciously aware of oneself as a problem solver. It's really important because if you are analyzing how you're learning the information, it allows you to learn deeper at the higher levels of learning. When you think about your thinking, you can monitor and plan how you are doing to learn something. You can also accurately judge how well you have learned something, and it's really essential in the process of learning how to learn. 
So you might be thinking, how do I become aware? How do I think about what I'm thinking? And a good way to do that is just taking a step back to understand what strategies or techniques you're using. Are those strategies working? Why are they working? Why aren't they working? Just assessing that and helping accurately judge your level of learning. Next, I have a reflection question for you. What is the difference between studying and learning? Go ahead, pause this video, jot it down somewhere, really think about what is the difference between studying and learning. So now that you've had a little bit of time to reflect on that, I'm gonna go over the difference between studying and learning. So studying is memorizing information for that quiz or that exam. It's very short term, it's very, what do I have to do to get an A? Memorize that information, after that test passes, that information doesn't mean a whole lot to you. But learning, on the other hand, is understanding that and applying the information. It's long term. It's being able to think, what do I do to use this material again? Applying it to other classes, applying it to other areas of your life, really having a deeper understanding of it. Students will do a lot better in courses when you put yourself in learn mode instead of study mode. When you're able to have a deeper understanding, it's gonna help you long term. And when you're just studying the information, you're only memorizing it for a short amount of time. Now, after going over all of that, we're gonna move into the study cycle, which is a process for organizing your study time. It's a five-step process that gives you a framework of learning information more deeply. This is a really great way to avoid cramming before an exam and this is a way to actually learn the material. Okay, so the first step of the study cycle is the preview step. So previewing it only takes about 10 minutes to do, and it's really priming your brain. So this is when you go to class, reviewing for about 10 minutes what is gonna be covered in lecture. Look over the main concepts, the main topics beforehand. Just really get ready to learn more about the class you're going to or more about the information you're getting ready to learn. What I want you all to do is pull out your packet once again and write down some strategies you have that would be considered previewing. You can go ahead, pause this video, write down a few of those strategies you have, then we'll go over some of them. I'm sure you all came up with some really great strategies. Some strategies we have for previewing before class is skimming the chapter, going over note headings and bold-faced words, looking at review summaries and objectives, or coming up with questions you'd like the lecture to answer for you. Step two of the study cycle is a 10 class. So go ahead, pause this video again, and come up with some strategies and write them down in your packet for step two attending class. I'm sure you all came up with some really great strategies again. A couple we have is answering and asking questions, taking meaningful, thorough notes throughout the lecture, really engaging with that material, um, and then learning hour versus wasted hour. So going and attending class, you're doing something, you're learning, you're interacting versus not going to class, you're just wasting an hour of really getting to dive into that material and learning a lot about it. Step three is review. So once again, pause the video and write down some of your strategies you have for reviewing. So for reviewing after class, it's important to know that when you hear something, that information is going into your short-term memory. In order to move that information into your long-term memory, you have to do something. You have to take another step towards it. So as soon as class is over, reviewing and going over your notes is going to help your mind fill in any gaps that you might have had when that lecture is still fresh in your head. So as soon after class as possible, if you have another class right after, then after both of those classes are done, go after, go over your notes, fill in those gaps, start any questions you have, circle any questions you have that you need clarity on, but the overall goal is to go over what was covered in lecture as soon as you can and really review that material.
Step four is the study portion. So go ahead, write down some of your strategies, pause the video, and we'll go over them. So for study, so for the study portion of the study cycle, repetition is key. Also, when you're going over stuff, ask the questions of why, how, what if. This is really going to help you learn the information versus just memorize it. Some ways to do that are to read notes and materials from the week and make connections. And then also just organize, concept map all your topics out. Go over everything, summarize it, practice. And a big one is teach it to someone else. Teaching and under being able to understand it and help someone else learn it is really going to help you understand it even better. Another resource we have for the study portion is something we call intense study sessions, which I will go over in the next slide. So like I said, we have something called an intense study session that really helps with this study portion of the study cycle. So it's a really great way to structure it. We like to start with setting a goal. Decide what exactly you want to accomplish in your study section. Is that going over two chapters? Is that taking a practice quiz? Really set that goal for yourself and it doesn't have to take long to do. Okay. Study with focus. Really take 30 to 50 minutes of intense time to interact with your material. Organize it, concept map, fill in your notes, reflect. Do whatever you have to do for 30 to 50 minutes of intense studying. Next, reward yourself. After you studied with focus for 30 to 50 minutes, take a break, go on a walk, call a friend, do something to reward yourself for the studying you just got done. And then lastly, review. Take a few minutes to go over what you studied. Maybe you use that time to recognize what you need to study more, or maybe you use that time just to review it in your head and reflect on what you just studied. The fifth step of the study cycle is to assess your learning. So go ahead, reflect on this, and come up with some strategies for assessing your learning. So I'm sure you all had some really great strategies for the assess portion, but something I want to point out is that this step really focuses on the metacognition. So assessing your learning, answering the questions, am I using study methods that are effective, and do I understand the material enough to teach it to others? Really think to yourself, was, was that study session effective? Did I learn from it? Am I ready for the exam coming up? Do I understand the material? So really reflect on your study cycle you have just went through and answer some of those questions. The final reflection question I have for you is what is one thing that was presented today that you would like to implement into your day to day? Is that doing the intense study sessions? Is that reviewing after every single class? Just really reflect on that and figure something that you want to take from this presentation and really start implementing in your schooling. So that concludes the study cycle presentation. Just follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Iowa State ASC if you would like to see some updates frequently from us. And then once again, we're located in 1060 Hicks and Leith. You can go to our website to find out more information about any of our services or utilize some of our great resources. We're located right off the 23 Orange bus route across from Maple Willow Larch. And you can contact us at our phone number, our email, or go to our website to find any more information out. Thank you all for joining and tuning in to this workshop.